Hey guys, it's Jamie here. Today I'm going to be showing you how I painted up my Africa Core Panzer IV, as you can see in the video right now. That's the exact one we're going to be painting up together, guys. I've painted it to what I believe is quite a good gaming standard. It's going to look great on the board from three, four, five feet away. Um, it's not going to win any competitions, but it's quite an easy way of getting a nice Africa Core looking armoured platoon up and ready in no time at all. You could easily batch paint this method and do a whole platoon of tanks or do a Panzer IV, a Tiger, etc. all at the same time. I'd like to remind you guys about the community group build. I'd like to remind you guys about our Facebook group. There's a link in the description below. And I'll see you guys shortly. See you in a bit. Hey guys, let's start painting this Africa Core Panzer IV. Now I'm inspired by the Facebook group. There's a couple of guys who have been posting Panzer IVs in that scheme. So I thought I'd give it a go. I'm starting off after a base coat of grey primer, I'm applying ammo by Mick Jimenez, I'm applying grey base. And this is going to be the chipping colour, this is going to be what the colour that chips are underneath the sand. I want it to look like it was a grey tank that's been repainted for the Africa Theatre, so that's why I've chosen it as a basis. Throughout this tutorial, unless I mention otherwise, I'll be using ammo by Mick Jimenez paints just because I find them really agreeable. And even if I do not say it, whatever I do to the turret, I do to the hull of the tank and vice versa. So I'll just keep that in mind as sometimes I only show one or the other. After applying a nice thin coat of grey base, the next step is to apply some heavy chipping effect again from Ammo of Mick Jimenez. This is a great product guys, it takes a while to dry, apply it in a nice thin coat if you want a lot of chips, apply it in a thicker coat if you want to make it harder to chip the paint and therefore have fewer chips. Just apply it all over the model, um, I recommend doing it by airbrush, I've been told it works by hand but I've not tried it myself that way. On top of this, once it's thoroughly dry, we're going to be applying our base coat for the desert scheme and for that we're going to be using RAL 8020 Gal Brown from Ammo of Mick Jimenez. Um, sorry if I pronounced that wrong guys, I'm not the best with foreign names. Apply this in a nice thin coat all the way over the model, it's quite pale. But that's going to be great because it's going to be a real heavy contrast once we start doing those chips. And with Africa Core tanks and lighter tanks in general, it's sometimes it can be hard to get that contrast. So I really, this is a good opportunity to get it this way. Now we're going to be shading that and for this I'm actually going to be using an ink from the Army Painter. I'm going to be using Soft Tone ink through my airbrush and the thing about an ink is the more you apply the darker it becomes. So what you can do is you can actually create a full modulation using just one ink, one light coat for the lighter set sections and then come back again and do a darker one in the way you really want it to be a darker colour than the rest of the vehicle. I apply this on the bottom of panels where two panels me, um, down sides doors, around the turret hatch, etc. Those sort of areas it's where this really suits. What I also think this does to the vehicle is make it look like it's been bleached by the sun in certain areas. And it's great to just, you know, add some different tones in there. It's not going to look as stark as it looks here once we're finished, guys, so don't worry. Okay, the next step is to come back with that Gale Brown from Ammo Mick Jimenez and just reapply that in areas where the ink maybe you put too much on, some of the ink might show through, so you can get some cool effects. I like to keep it so that the vehicle looks different colours all over, different tones, but still looks uniform. Okay, now we can start the chipping, and to start this you just put some water on the model with a brush, and parts of it are going to start flaking away. Now how much chipping you do is up to you, I'm going to be doing quite a lot, I want this to be a battered survivor, it showed up in grey, it's been repainted for the desert theatre and it saw a lot of action. You can see now the paint is starting to chip off, what I like about this is you get a 3D effect because they are actually paint chips, so it suits what we're trying to achieve here. Now for some smaller chips I actually like to clip a Q-tip to create like a sharp edge and I just drag that along edges. Um, with this I pay special attention to hatches, doors, engine covers, um, the back of the hull of the tank, areas that are going to see a lot of traffic where the paint's going to be chipping more so than in other areas. I might also have to apply some more water. What I like about chipping um, fluid is you can use this with 
pretty much any scheme as long as the two colors contrast it's going to work really well obviously if you do gray chips on a gray vehicle or metal chips on a gray vehicle it's not going to have the same sort of effect so you might not always want to use this but it's something that i definitely use quite often i also use sponge chipping so now guys i just want to show you how much chipping i've done i've gone a bit heavy but you know that's it's personal taste I've chipped the road wheels especially heavy because to me with the sand and the uh, bricks and the stones being kicked up by the tracks they're going to be quite heavily chipped. Now I'm applying a coat of gloss varnish to the model before putting decals on because otherwise when we put the water for the decals on we're going to start making chips by accident which obviously is not what we want to be doing so it's important to protect what we've done so far. I use Liquitex varnish in the main mainly because I find it, it works well and it's quite cheap for a large amount. But Ammo by McHimenez, AK Interactive, Vallejo, they all produce their own brands of varnish and any sort of varnish would do the job. The reason I'm using a gloss is it's going to create a nice flat surface for the decals to stick to shortly. I also apply it to the tracks, although they're not receiving a decal, it's just for protection purposes. Now decals are applied using water and I just move them about until I'm happy. Take your time with this. I decals on a nice thin carrier film and there's a lot of choice and you also get spares so don't worry if you mess up this stage guys I've messed up decals many times in the past especially when I was new to modeling but I found that with a bit of practice using some tweezers and a nice brush and just the right amount of water I got the hang of it so anyone can once I'm happy with the position, we're going to be fixing that in place using Vallejo Decal Medium. Well, what Decal Medium does, it's alcohol based. It's also going to slightly melt the decal so you can't see the edges. This works really well with our decals, which are already printed on a thin carrier film. So that's not usually a problem, but this is just nice just to, just to go that step further. Now I'm going to apply matte varnish all over the model because we're going to be coming back and we're going to be painting by hand. We're going to be painting all the tools the wheel trims, the tracks, etc. And it's a lot easier to do this over a matte surface than it is over a gloss one. The paint will stick better, you'll have more control over the paint, it won't flow so much. Now, when I'm varnishing models, I use a Badger Patriot. The reason for that is because it has a thicker needle and nozzle setup than my eye water which I use when I'm using colours. Now for the tools, I'm mostly going to be using the ammo by Mickey as tool colours set. It's a great set, it's got a little guide on the back. I'm just going to be following that along. I might not show you every single tool because painting tools on camera is actually quite hard because they're, they're quite small areas, but you'll get the general idea. I use the gun metal from that set also for the tracks as well as all the metal tools and the machine guns on the miniature. It's great paint, it's really shiny, it flows really well and it dries quite quick. I'm also going to give metal areas a wash in army painted strung tone just to create some different tones and some shading in there. I don't show it but I also paint the fire extinguisher and some of the tools in Baker light again by ammo. The reason I use that colour is it makes a nice red primer colour for those areas. Like I said, I just follow the guide almost exclusively on the tool colour set. The only time I don't follow it is when I'm actually painting the wood areas. In that case, I use Vallejo Chocolate Brown. And the reason for that is that the colour contained in the ammo by Jimenez is quite pale and it doesn't contrast as well with the DAC tank. However, if I was to be doing a tricolor camo or even a British or American tank I'd probably use new wood, light wood or old wood from Ammo of Mick Jimenez but in this case it doesn't contrast enough with the sandy colour which is already quite light. Now the trims of road wheels I actually paint using satin black from Ammo of Mick Jimenez. At first you're going to be like wow that's really stark. Don't worry when we hit it with some pigments later it's going to be less noticeable. Now we're going to be applying an enamel wash to the model, I like to apply a gloss varnish because it protects your work from the white spirit. White spirit shouldn't affect the acrylic paint but it can affect the surface of the model and it's also going to help it flow well. 
Now always use a synthetic brush for this because the white spirit is going to eat through your brushes and synthetic brushes are in general cheaper than the more expensive Kalinsky Sable brushes. Apply this as a pin wash around any details. Don't worry if you're getting it anywhere. You don't want it guys. It's really easy to wipe off. You clean it off using a dry brush, um, some damp white spirit for those tougher areas and I like to use a Q-tip for it as well. Or in that case then I just used my finger. So Enamel washes have a big bonus over acrylics in the fact that they're slow to dry and you can remove them using white spirit whereas the acrylic wash it's kind of a case of once it's in a position you don't want it, it it's kind of stuck there I still use acrylic washes for stuff like the tracks and the metal I use the army painter ones but there are different things suited to different aspects of painting and what works for you might not work for someone else what works for me might not work for you so it's important to experiment guys now our mixtures take washes really well because of all the deep detail in the plastic Here I'm just showing how I use Q-tip to remove excess wash. I use odorless thinner from Amo and Mick Jimenez. The reason I use odorless thinner over the cheaper white spirits you can buy um, is basically because the cheaper white spirits are a bit more harsh and they're going to remove all the wash immediately whereas with this you have some control over how much wash is removed. You can remove it all or you can leave some in the recesses. It's a lot more gradual process than using the cheaper white spirit that would just remove it immediately and then you might have to find yourself waiting for the white spirit to dry and coming back and reapplying the wash which when you're painting up a whole army is something that you don't want to do now the purpose of these videos guys isn't to show you how to win an award winning tank I'm not quite at that, that level I'm still learning but it does show you how to paint up a nice looking tank for the tabletop in quite a short period of time using a few basic products and ideas. If you guys want to see how to paint an award winning tank I highly recommend checking out Karsten the tight head prop. Now he's won a silver at salute. He uses a variety of weathering products from different companies and he has some great tutorials using Rubicon tanks on his channel. If you check the description below there will be a link to the tight head props channel. He was also with us at Crisis, some of you guys came over and spoke to myself, some of you guys came over and spoke to Karsten and he answered some of your painting questions, he was doing painting demos. He does a lot of Rubicon tanks, I highly recommend checking that channel out. Now what I'm doing here guys is I'm applying a matte coat, basically it seals in all the varnish work that we've done and it's also going to apply a nice surface for us to come back shortly and start messing around with pigments pigments always stick better to a matte coat than to a satin or a gloss one if it's on gloss they they kind of just slide off it's not as good you can do it but you know it's it's easier this way i find now i'm going to use three different colors of pigments for the tracks and the bottom of the hole and they're all from Amor of mckimenez it's north africa dust middle east dust and sand and the reason I use three colours is then you get those different tones, it looks a lot more natural than just a single uniform colour. It's almost like layering paint in the sense that sand will be a highlight to the other two dust colours. It looks a lot more natural I find. And what I do is I apply some pigment fixer. You can use any brand you want. And then I put the pigment on top. It's quite messy, I'm sorry my work area gets messier as the videos go on. I then get a dry brush, quite stiff, and wipe any excess pigment off that I don't want on there. It's important that you wipe excess pigment off before the pigment fixer dries, otherwise it's going to pretty much be stuck there. The other reason for using a variety of pigment colours is because if we were to use just sand, then it would be a bit too close to the colour of the hull in my opinion and you won't have as much contrast which is on the table contrast is important when you're looking at a miniature from 3 feet, 4 feet, 5 feet away. Here yeah, I'm just showing you the dust effects you can see all the different colours in there and I've applied it to the bottom of the hall. Now we need to start weathering up the exhaust and for this I'm going to be using a pigment range that doesn't get a lot of exposure compared to some of the out there, it's broken tall pigments. I really like these, they're really fine, they suit this job perfectly. I apply some pigment fixer and then I'm going to be using old rust. 
Uh, Old Rust is a great colour. I find it looks really natural. It looks a bit like red primer as well when it's dry because it's such a fine pigment. But you're getting texture as well and it still looks like rust. I like to use it as well in this case because again it's going to create some really great contrast as this is quite a different colour to that of the whole. I leave some of the metal showing because it wouldn't all rust uniform. There's going to be a link in the description below to ammo of Mick Jimenez where I get a lot of my paints from and also to Broken Told where I get these pigments from. I'm going to apply some new rust on top just to create some different tones in there, similar to what we did with the dust earlier. I don't apply much of this colour, it's quite bright, I just apply enough just to give a general idea of a highlight. I'm not doing streaking effects on this tank, I feel it doesn't need it so much, mainly because the surface areas are quite small and I feel like the dust and the pigment work and the ink that we used earlier has done quite a nice job. Sometimes I don't want to ruin it by going too far. Now for the tip of the gun and the engines at the back, I'm going to be using Burnt Ash again from Broken Told. I like this colour, it's not as deep black as the Meek Productions smoke that you've seen me use in the past, therefore it's not quite as stark, and as this is a lighter vehicle, I don't want it to be as stark, it doesn't need to be. I'm a bit out of shot here guys, I apologise for that, but all I'm doing is applying some of this colour to the tip of the gun barrel, as you can see here. Create some nice contrast on the end of the gun barrel. I'm also going to apply it to the engine areas at the back and what I'm going to actually do guys is feather it out with a finger. You know it was your first paintbrush when you were younger so it's great for jobs like this. If it works don't fix it. And all that's left to do before this tank can hit the gaming table and get finally its finished assembly is to apply a final coat of matte varnish to seal all the pigment work and we're done. I hope you guys found this tutorial informative, I hope that you'll come back for more and I would really appreciate it if you comment in the description below. I'll see you guys shortly.